Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Red Olin Live from Mullingar in Mullingar. We are on the streets of Mullingar and uh, enjoying the weather. It's after changing slightly, but uh, September is on the way and uh, the autumn is heading this direction. Everyone is getting ready for school. Families are getting ready for school. Mothers are getting ready for school and uh, it's began. But we are lucky enough to meet a gentleman who has great vision for Mullingar Cinema and Mullingar Art and Mullingar Movies and his name is Liam Hall. Hello Liam, how's it going? Hello, how are you Ray? Great, great, great. Uh, keep him good and uh, delighted to meet you. Um, I've seen a lot of your stuff, you're after doing a few movies and yep. you're um, you're coming in from, um, is it Rochester Bridge? Or? I am from Rochester Bridge, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah from Rochester Bridge. Uh, Born in Mullingar, but raised in Rochester Bridge, yeah. Go on the bridge. Oh, well, on the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself. You are, uh, you made some movies already on, uh, just with local lads and the whole lot having the crack. Um, what, uh, first of all, are you in the movie business or what is your plan or how are you surviving now? Yeah, so I've been acting for about three or four years now. Good um, man. Yeah, but I suppose I didn't. I couldn't see myself ever as a writer or a director. You know, it's something. Yeah. You kind of think it's more kind of like you know, you think it's you don't have the skill for that. It's something that has to be learned over years. Yeah. But um, I recently attended this thing called Kino D in Dublin, which oh. is it's, a, it's this event where filmmakers of all levels and experiences and actors come together, and they make films. And I just saw the process, and then being in that environment and seeing the process, I realized that this actually isn't that difficult. Anyone, I believe anyone of any walk of life, of any experience, can make a film and actually can make quite good films. It's, it's amazing what came out, the first keynote idea I was at. So then I went, I took, that was back in April, I walked away from that experience. Mm -hmm. I had been developing a film that some of you may have heard called The Lads. That's right. Which is, a, it's a Midlands, Westmead film. Yeah. It's about Westmead people and Westmead isms, you know, only certain thing things from the you know people from the midlands would get like certain jokes certain humors so that that's kind of led me to this path and trying to create this new filmmaking thing that i want to create um like mullingar as say is coming on leaps and bounds and uh there's always been music in mullingar and yeah. I, i'd always said that the music comes it's in the water um and i think we have a lot of it's like film artists, we have storytellers, we have a lot of writers of songs, a lot of musicians. Uh, it seems the arts seem to come in around Mullingar. Yeah, yeah. More and more. Now, I mean, you're a young man. I mean, when did you finish school? Like, I finished 2020. So, so te yeah, like, I, was a co I was the COVID year. I was one of the lads who didn't get to do the leaving, sir. Yeah. So it was a strange one. I never got that closure in school. Yeah. So it, it was, it's still strange to think like, oh Jesus, I never, I never got a, a Debs or I never got, you know. Yeah. So doing the lads was like almost like therapeutic for me, you know. I was doing the Debs. Like I, we, there in the St. Joseph's Hall, we created a Debs set. Right. And it was like, yeah, this is like, this is a closure for me. Yeah, but I've been out of school now for about two years, so. I'm 21 and I just think the time is now, you know. Yeah. It's, you know, there's an opportunity here, like Mullingar is a centre of excellence for music. And I think the potential is there to make it a centre of excellence for film. I mean, like, why not, you know. Mm -hmm. If people are, if there's passionate people around who want to come together, make films, you know, make something of themselves, try to prove themselves, why not, you know, why can't, why can't we come together, you know, be a collective and try to inspire excellent well um that's a great idea is getting everyone together is the big thing and getting yeah. all them people in one place now i was talking to um a gentleman um well we call him bottler but it's dara caffrey <laughs> <laughs> dara was telling me that he, his building is the cinema the old cinema yeah. in mullingar mm. and literally what's left is the upstairs of the cinema yeah, yeah. now he reckons you can get about 200 people into yeah, it yeah. Which I was just speaking the other day and he says you must come up and have a look and hopefully we're going to get down there and showcase um, what's upstairs in the old cinema. Uh, this could be a place for this uh, this con this collection of people. Oh definitely yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, have you chatted to um, Butler? Have you met him? Butler no, is no, his I, name. I've never met him no no. <laughs> he owns Wilfs down there. I, okay. I, I should definitely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, call I, in and see um, uh, Dara is his name, but we yeah. always know him as Butler because Butler. 
uh, Brendan Grace had uh, this character called Butler. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he became Butler. His brothers <laughs> called him that, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's an idea um, just to put out there, folks, as well. Uh, at the moment, what are you doing with your career? Like, in what direction are you heading? Uh, are you just chilling out for the summer? And yeah, so um, I recently, I why like I had develop been developing the lads for about two years now, mm. and this January I was in university, but I wasn't really finding it meaningful, mm -hmm. and I, did, I I could never see myself fulfilled doing the degree I was doing. What's the degree you're doing? <laughs> it was economics, politics, and law in DCU. So right, it's a bit. Bit, bit far away now from film but, yeah um, yeah but it's still uh, it's still film <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's there's an element of acting in those pr professions yeah um but i just didn't see i couldn't see myself in that role i couldn't see where i would go from there i just you know i couldn't see the progression mm. so i dropped out in january and i started putting heavy emphasis on making the lads right and i got a job in samsung and i i was producing the lads and working in samsung so i built up a bit of money where in Samsung? Um, the factory or yeah, no. So there's um there's a company called PRL and they have a contract with Samsung to do manage technical returns. So I was working for Samsung managing their technical returns, grade and that sort of thing, hmm. down in Rathcool. Nice. So I lived in Dublin for about a year. Yeah. And this June I came back to Rochester Bridge. I moved back to Rochester Bridge to make the lads on the bridge it was, it was seven so most people when they make a, a, their first film yeah. they're not experienced I wasn't experienced they might do you know a five or six page film you know a small thing yeah. but I did a 40 page film I got <laughs> I got professionals down from Dublin <laughs> and it was big one day on set there was 40 people so managing 40 people you know most people do you know, oh, were you on the set as yo, well? Yo, 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 I was in it. I was producing. You were in it. I wrote a producer, director, and I was in it. It was it was chaos, man. Oh, there was a funny story now I should tell you. So we got into the hall, and I got all the crew. And this Deb scene was a whole day. It was about 12 or 14 hours yeah. getting everyone down. But I asked a few of the crew to come down and help setting up. But obviously, when you're doing a Deb scene, you know, the, the, these big lights in the hall need to be blackened out. And there was this big, heavy, industrial, black, you know, covering. And we were trying to put it up. Couldn't get it up. It took right. us five hours to get it up. And it just, you have about 40 people in the room all you know, dolled up in dresses and all, like, waiting around. I was like, oh, Jesus, you know. You, you need scaffolding to do that. But look, yeah. we got it up eventually. And, yeah, but it's it's one of those things where if you lose time on a film, say, even an hour, you're under pressure. That's five true. hours, you know. Yeah. Jesus, I slept that night, you know. But as well as that, what you've done is you've done, you've gone straight into it and you've made as many mistakes as possible. Yes. And if you learned all them mistakes, because you went home that night and you went, I should have, yeah, could have, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And all them mistakes, it's like what I'd say is if you're a singer, you got to go out and sing in front of an audience because you have to make the mistakes exactly. to better yourself. And this is what you've done with the movie. And it's a great way of learning. It's the only way of learning, exactly. I feel. Yeah. Um, because you're doing you're doing it yeah and that's the most it's like us doing the videos uh, we make loads of mistakes even singing we make mistakes yeah. but um as far as i'm concerned we're moving forward in some shape or form exactly and yeah. you're learning as well you're learning your art you know what i mean but uh so the movie is complete now is that right the film is yeah, we're, we're, we're in post-production now with mm. it we're hoping to release it around different venues around Mullingar and Rochester Bridge and Westmead in November mm -hmm. and it's going to be about 40 minutes long and it's quite a cinematic experience I think people really get a lot of it people who went to school in, in the Midlands will really I think relate to it and there's a there's a very serious dramatic undertone to it all mm. you know, there's themes of obviously friendship and love but there's also you know mental health issues and raises some questions Good so it's it, you know covers a broad spectrum the film i think people really really enjoy it uh, so this is the lads the this, lads yeah. right and yeah. then there's sort of previews that have been out already but it's going to be a proper movie and then you're yeah. going to show you're going to show it off somewhere yeah we will hopefully show it around one we've made a few the lads anthology things which are this is a new thing i've come up with where I want to make you know little the lad shorts that are kind of related to the film, but get different directors and writers in right. to give a different flavor. You know yeah. the same characters, but a completely different almost premise. But it's it's just to give people you know the room to experiment with these characters. But the actual the lads film is its own entity, and that'll come out in November. 
Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, so, how do you get people interested in the in the, the lads' movie? Like, I mean, yeah. I'm talking about to show it somewhere. So you want to show it all over Ireland. So you got to go and show your man who runs all that area and yeah. say, what do you think? Or do you put it into uh, festivals and say, well, we're dropping into this festival here and see what they think of it? Yeah, so it's it's too long to be in festivals because generally the rule of festivals is so there's shorts or feature films. Mm. And to be a short, you have to be under half an hour. And to be a feature film, you have to be generally over an hour. Oh. Uh, it's about 40 minutes, so it's kind of, it's the bane yeah. of festivals, this film. It won't get into any festivals because it's just an awkward length. So I kind of want to show it off. Just if the, the main reason I made it was to inspire people mm. from Westmead, you know, actors. There was a lot of people from the art centre in it and they told me this was their first film right and they would they, they were so appreciative that the fact that you know someone was able to come and you know give them the opportunity to get that experience you know and this for me is just the beginning i want to give more westmead actors you know their first films you know because to make it in the industry acting industry as an actor you need a show reel and it's very difficult to get a show reel like you have to spend a lot of time mm. i mean i spend you know hours upon hours upon hours networking you know, trying to make connections with people so I could get in their films. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go out there and say, look, I'm going to help you out and I'd love to go into the art centre and, and work with them and try and, you know, get their careers going. Because I think there is no avenue in Westmead or even the Mid Midlands area for screen acting. Uh, what about then this new building that's going in in Robinstown? Um, what exactly is that going to be or do we know? <laughs> Yeah. Well, like everyone says it's going to be great but I mean what is it going to be yeah I think it's going to be for it's well it's going to be the biggest the most likely the best film studio in Europe but it, I I well I estimate it's going to be for big studios for big films but you never know with these things you know you don't really know till they come to fruition but I do think it has the potential to completely change the landscape mm. of Westmead and Westmead filmmaking and actors out there is there many actors in Westmead like? you'd be surprised there is there's many many actors in Westmead but yeah. because you know like I said the frustration for me for years is I've always had to go to Dublin to, you know to get any opportunities and I have spent loads of money like thousands upon thousands mm -hmm. on getting good training mm -hmm. you know getting making good connections and so that's why you don't really hear of them in your locality because they're all they always have to leave yeah i want to be able to offer people the opportunity not to leave mm -hmm. and say stay here let's build the industry locally mm -hmm. and let's get people wanting to watch westmead films you know building you know you know reputations of westmead actors i think mm -hmm. look well, we've tina kelleher to... there the whole time and she's yeah. uh, living here in mullingar yeah. and i mean she's had a, a great career yeah and that's just one that comes to mind. Eve Alger from Mullingar. That's right. Yeah, and she's massive. Yeah. Yeah. But it's to me, I I I, I love I love if we've got so many musicians that are famous and mm. have done big things. Mm. I love if we had a, a repertoire of Westmead actors. It'd be brilliant. Well, there you are, folks. That's our chat for you this morning. Uh, coming to you live from the back of the bus. This is our recording studio. We've the whole lot here. We've got lights. We have cameras. We have makeup done. <laughs> There's a whole crew here, folks. And uh, <laughs> we're blessed with the light because the light is just coming in through here. <laughs> so that keeps it shining. Uh, once again, thank you very much, uh, Liam, for coming on board. And uh, in the future, give us a shout and see um, if we can you know ch chat out something else or put something else out there Definitely. um just give us a shout and if anyone is interested in acting uh, get back to us here i've tagged liam above uh you've got two names liam paul <laughs> walsh uh, walsh where did they come from um well i my mother is is walsh mm -hmm. and my father is hall right and um i just i've kept the name because i like i, like, I just it's very show busy yes exactly yes. i like it yeah. liam hall Watch. <laughs> well, my uncle. Movies. My uncle is, is a documentary filmmaker. All oh, right. And his name is Liam Hall. Right. So there's already a Liam Hall. So. Oh I yes. Have to, I have to diversify. Put the old stamp on her. <laughs> yes. I have we're... to build my own brand. You know. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So, uh, what's the plans for today now? The plans for today, I'm probably going to go and do more writing. So I'm going to do more screenwriting. Um, it's but it's mad though. That that Kino thing we did. Mm. Um, which I did it there a few it's weeks ago. It's called Kino. Kino D. So Kino is like it's a phenomenon that was based after Y two K, where a lot of German filmmakers came together 
because they thought the world was going to end. So they came together in a, sa in a, in a the same space and made as many films as possible mm. before they thought the world was going to end. So it started off this phenomenon, this Kino phenomenon where you have it in different cities and they did, just did one in Dublin. It was an international 10 day one. I was down in Dublin for 10 days making movies for 10 days. Mm. And you know, some of the films that I made, I got an unbelievable reaction you got people coming up to me saying so where did you do your film degree or where did you do your screenwriter degree and i was like in roger bridge i don't know yeah roger bridge <laughs> saint joseph's roger bridge <laughs> yeah but is it in a way like that almost is like doing a degree because i i always go off what i know you know i think you can only write what you know mm -hmm. and the lads is based on is based off my experience in school in roger bridge and everything that I always write is always tried. I always try to base off personal experience, which I think most people should do, because yeah. you know pe it's easier for people to empathise with you know, something that's real, honest that's happened. You know, there's an element of truth to it. So, have you the full movie made, or do you still need to write more? No, the f the film is made. Oh, the film, sorry. I'm, I'm making I'm making my own things. Um, I'm making different things. I'm looking to change up all the films I screened at Kino D were very very different to the lads where the lads is like a is like a satire of west mead mm -hmm. a sort of a farcical comedy i made much more serious grounded dramas in uh kino and it, with the kino then did they give you all the equipment like that, yeah, that's, film cameras yes, yes that's the thing everyone comes together it's so it's such a community-based thing mm. all these filmmakers come together bring their own equipment i mean i have oh. i have professional lights so i brought my lights and my my clapperboard yeah. <laughs> and my panels and stuff brought them in there and everyone just shares so we were using stuff you know really professional grade stuff off that other people owned and that's the real benefit kino you know so you were shooting on proper film yeah yeah it's expensive machines oh definitely you know like i mean you're almost there like it's almost like teflon you don't want to break it <laughs> do you know what i mean you're like, <laughs> i got the end of this i better not yeah, drop oh, it yeah. we were doing filming on a beach and yeah. Jesus, one wrong step, I could end up in the, in the sea, you know. <laughs> it's funny, though, know, where these things go. Right, thank you very much for being on board. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And, thank uh, you. There you are, Philem, Philem Man in Mullingar, <laughs> and uh, his name is Liam. See him down the street, or say hello, and uh, you never know where the chat will bring you. So, good morning to you, folks, and we'll see you later on. Bye for now. Bye-bye.